Welcome to Fantastic Vision. Please subscribe us before you watch today's video. Recently, two news came one after another. The US company Western Digital has obtained a license to ship memory chips to Huawei. The US plans to extend the exemption period for TSMC, Samsung, and SK Hynix's mainland fabs which seems to be releasing a signal to relax restrictions. However, insiders believe that the possibility is unlikely, because the tripartite agreement is still advancing. Japan has announced the implementation of export controls in July, the Netherlands will also issue restrictions, and the US media has reported new US restrictions. The situation is even more serious. Technological hegemony is very important to the United States, and it has been actively promoting the restriction of advanced technology for many years. The Wassenaar Agreement is a direct proof. Now, the United States has finally reached a tripartite agreement, so how could it give up so easily? Moreover, Japan has acted as a vanguard and took the lead in announcing that it will impose export controls on 23 items of advanced semiconductor equipment in six categories, which will take effect on July 23rd. Japanese equipment manufacturers, such as Nikon and Tokyo Electron, must apply for licenses. More importantly, Japan's restrictions are even stricter than those of the United States, and immersion lithography machines are limited to 45 nanometers. Japan's active, leading behavior has pushed the Netherlands, the other party to the tripartite agreement, into a corner. The Netherlands was reluctant to follow the US restrictions at first, but after all, it is only a small country in Europe. Under the constant pressure from the United States, it could only choose to participate in the end. However, the Netherlands has not introduced detailed rules for restrictions, nor has it specified the implementation time of export controls, which may be related to ASML. ASML has eight 1980DI lithography machines that have been targeted by the United States, returned to the original factory for modification, and recently completed delivery to Chinese companies. Since then, the news has spread that the Netherlands will announce the export control-related matters formulated by the end of June or the first week of July. According to people familiar with the matter, the Netherlands will announce new restrictions in the near future. It is expected that ASML's immersion DUV lithography machines will be restricted, and shipments to Chinese companies need to apply for a license. However, the new Dutch regulations will take effect in September. Compared with Japan, the Netherlands seems to be actively buying time for its own business shipments, and ASML has a two-month buffer period. However, ASML previously predicted that the 1980DI could be shipped to Chinese companies normally. Even though the new regulations in the Netherlands do not impose restrictions, according to people familiar with the matter, the United States seems to be eyeing this model again and may ban it from being used by six Chinese wafer manufacturers. Because according to relevant news, the United States will further upgrade the relevant restrictive rules in July this year based on the new export control regulations introduced in October last year allowing the United States to further increase restrictions on the export of foreign equipment containing American parts and components. Even if it contains a small part of American parts, it will be restricted. 
The specific equipment involved depends on the new rules of the United States. Not only that, it has also been reported recently that the United States will further restrict AI chips, which have previously restricted A100H100. For this reason, NVIDIA has launched special versions of A800 and H800, but the United States may expand restrictions on these special versions of chips. The United States continues to increase chip restrictions, undermining the globalization of the semiconductor industry. Recently, Dr. Chen Nanxiang, executive chairman and CEO of YMTC, delivered a speech saying that globalization is an important driving force for the prosperity and development of the semiconductor industry. The destruction of globalization will seriously affect the development of the global semiconductor industry. Dr. Chen also said that if the equipment purchased by Changjiang Changsun according to the law cannot be delivered or cannot be used, the manufacturer should set a time to repurchase the equipment. This suggestion can be regarded as an important response to the U.S. chip restrictions. Even if it is not allowed to be used by China, then buy it back. Previously, the new regulations in the United States required American semiconductor equipment companies to recall technical service personnel, making the purchased equipment unusable. What Dr. Chen means is that it is only fair to take away the equipment, as it cannot be used without spending money. This can also be regarded as putting some pressure on U.S. semiconductor equipment manufacturers, and it can also purchase more domestic alternative equipment. Regarding the destruction of globalization by U.S. chip restrictions, Morris Zhong, the founder of TSMC, once directly stated that globalization is dead. Dr. Chen also agreed with this sentence. TSMC has already experienced it, and Chinese companies such as Yangtze River Storage and Changshan Storage have also experienced it. However, TSMC has been deeply involved because TSMC has invested more than 40 billion US dollars to build a fab in the United States, and there is no way to turn back. It has submitted an application for subsidies, and recently decided to send another 500 people to the United States to speed up progress. After Morris Zhong proposed that globalization is dead, Yangtze Memory once again mentioned that globalization has been destroyed. In addition, the tripartite agreement is still advancing, the Netherlands will introduce restrictions, and the United States will impose new restrictions. Foreign media said that Morris Zhong was right. Now China can only completely solve the bottleneck and win the future, only by insisting on building an independent domestic chip industry chain.